All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about a few different types of energy, some new, new types of energy that we haven't talked about yet. So far, we've talked about kinetic and potential energy and mechanical energy. So there's, there's other types of energy as well, and some of them fall into those categories. But uh, so, so thermal energy here. Thermal energy is basically, we can think of it as heat energy. So what this comes from is the motion of particles in a substance. So something uh, that, that has a high temperature, that means that the particles are moving really fast inside of it. So the more heat energy it has, the faster the particles are going to move, and that's going to give us more thermal energy. So thermal energy depends on two things, really. It depends on how hot something is, how, how much heat it has, and also how big the object is. And by big, I mean mass and not volume. So how, how much mass is inside the object and how hot it is. So if we think about the sun here, why would the sun be, uh, have, have really high thermal energy? Well, based on the two things we just mentioned, the sun is, first of all, really, really big, right? So it has a lot of mass to it, and it's really, really hot. So if the sun is really, really big and really, really hot, that's going to give it a lot of thermal energy, and that's why it sustains life on Earth. If we think about some of the planets, something like maybe Neptune that's way further away from the sun than Earth, this is obviously not to scale. Neptune would be way over there. Uh, Neptune isn't as close to the sun, so it doesn't receive as much of that heat, right? So, so basically, the thermal energy that Neptune receives would be far lower than the thermal energy that Earth receives from the sun. That's why Earth is a planet that we can live on, and Neptune really isn't at this point. <laughs> so thermal energy is one type. Chemical energy is another type of energy. So chem chemical energy is energy that is due to the uh, reactions or interactions of atoms and molecules inside an object. All right, so uh, basically any chemical reaction that takes place, that gives off or uses chemical energy. All right, so one example of chemical energy is a battery. Batteries have different chemicals inside of them depending on what type of battery it is. Uh, the battery that powers your phone and laptop is most likely a lithium battery. There's also alkaline batteries. Those are plain, like this, this would be like a Duracell looking battery. Uh, they have alkaline metals inside of them, and there's nickel batteries. There's all different types of batteries, but they all drive off of chemical energy. So uh, another example of chemical energy would be burning anything, really. If we're burning wood, burning gasoline, anything we're burning, that stuff has chemical energy. And when we burn it, we're releasing that chemical energy and using it to make fire. So the fire itself is not chemical energy, but what we're burning has chemical energy in it, and when we're burning it, we're using up some of that chemical energy to sustain the fire or make our cars go or whatever, whatever the purpose of the burning is. Another example, a big example of chemical energy is food. Food has chemical energy, and that's why we eat food, is we can take that chemical energy and transform it into whatever form of energy we need uh, to use. So if we want to move, we would we would be needing kinetic energy, so we can convert some of the or chemical energy from our food into kinetic energy as we move. Electrical energy, this is kind of straightforward. Electrical energy comes from electricity, and what electricity is, is the flow of electrons. All right, so when we have uh, lightning, that would be an example of electrical energy. So basically a bunch of charge builds up in the sky and is discharged when it builds up too much down towards Earth. And that is electricity, that's electrical energy. Uh, any, anything you plug into the wall is using electrical energy. So a light bulb, your TV, your phone, anything that you might plug into the wall has electrical energy. Sound energy. Sound energy comes from sound waves, and these sound waves are caused by vibrations of, uh, if you have an instrument, uh, your vocal cords are vibrations. Uh, really anything that's making noise is causing vibrations, and that causes sound waves. So if you've ever seen this little speaker logo here on, any, on your phone, maybe, or computer, or, or whatnot, the, it has these little arcs here for a reason, these, these little arcs represent sound waves. All right? So sound waves are caused by these vibrations. So uh, that's why this logo has these little uh, wave symbols at the end of it. Uh, if we look at this drummer guy here, he's beating the, beating the drum with his mallet. And we can think about how, how does that produce sound energy? Well, he's swinging the mallet with kinetic energy because it's moving. And then he hits the drum membrane here. 
And how does that make sound? Well, the membrane would vibrate back and forth and that would give it the sound waves. And uh, the, all those sound waves, again, are coming from, from vibrations. So the vibrations of this drum membrane here are what would cause the sound energy. So here we're converting kinetic energy into sound energy. Light energy. Light energy is made from light waves, but light is not all always visible. Uh, what we think of as light, like from the sun or a light bulb, that is light, but there's also a bunch of other different types of light energy that are not visible. So one example would be a microwave. Uh, how a microwave works is there's a little uh, device in here, probably on this side by the looks of it, that produces light waves that are called microwaves, and they kind of shoot through the microwave here, and what they do is they make the molecules in the food or whatever you're warming up, they make them vibrate really, really fast, and that gives them more thermal energy. So a microwave is taking the light energy that's being shot through the microwave and converting it into uh, thermal energy when it heats up your uh, food or tea or whatever you might be making in the microwave. Right? So, but if you think about it, we can't see this light, right? It's, it's not like when you look in the microwave, you can see these little microwave beams being shot across. Not all light is visible. So microwaves are an example of light energy that's not visible to the human eye. Your cell phones are another example of this. There, there's kind of two ways that light energy is used in your cell phones. Your screen, right? Your screen is visible light, so we can see the light energy from your screen. And there's also light energy being used when your phone is communicating with another phone. So if you send a text to someone, it's not like you can see these little beams of text shooting through the air, but that is still uh, a form of light energy. Uh, it's just not, again, not visible to the human eye. So in, in the book or in some of our activities, you may have seen the term radiant energy. Uh, radiant energy and light energy are really the same thing. They're, they're kind of two, two words for the same thing. So if you see radiant energy, just think of it as light energy. All right, nuclear energy. Nuclear energy comes from nuclear reactions of atoms and molecules. So what that means is in, in atoms and molecules, we have the nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons. So let's throw a, fr a few protons and neutrons here. This would be the nucleus of an atom. And around the nucleus, out in this kind of cloud space here, would be a bunch of electrons that are a lot smaller. But so if we have this electron cloud, the nucleus in the middle, this was not drawn very well, but, but basically a nuclear reaction is having to do with the nucleus of an atom. So if we split up the nucleus, which is really hard to do and takes a bunch of energy, but if we do, it releases a lot of energy. So nuclear reactions are very, very powerful. And uh, if you guys have heard of nuclear bombs, that's, that's why uh, atomic bombs were such a big deal was because splitting the atom released a, a lot, a lot of energy, more than any conventional uh, bomb had before that point. Uh, so that, that's why those were such a big deal. Um, but aside from, aside from nuclear bombs, uh, there's, there's nuclear power plants. That's us harnessing nuclear energy for, for a productive thing. And if, you're, if you guys have ever seen these smokestacks before that have this kind of characteristic shape, these, these are basically emissions uh, from nuclear power plants. Uh, nuclear power plants are driven by these nuclear reactions. So they're doing nuclear reactions inside and we're getting energy out of it. Again, it releases a lot of energy. And the sun is powered by a nuclear reaction. So inside the sun, it's uh, what's called a fusion reaction, which is uh, two molecules basically being fused into one. And so this, uh, this would be an example of nuclear energy as well. So the sun converts its nuclear energy into light energy and thermal energy. So again, we get both heat and uh, light from the sun. And that all comes from the nuclear reactions that take place within the sun. All right, so those are the different types of energy we're going to go over this year. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.